is a comic review. Any of the opinions, actions, or otherwise of the creator, unless otherwise stated, are not being considered when reviewing the contents of this work. Hey guys, hey guys, StarCraft here, and today, come to the end of an era. Not the final Marvel Zombies one, but the last of the number ones. Marvel Zombie 5, and the second to last one by Fred Van Lente. This one is a tour de force. We get different zombies, no, none of the hunger gospel. We get them go to different universe, different artists, etc., etc. And in fact, when we started off, we have no idea what's going on initially because we're in a um, another universe. Basically, there's this thing called a planet storm, which is basically a um, an incident where a whole manifestation, you know, a highly unusual incident manifests across different universes. And basically, a bunch of zombies are attacks are happening, but of different types. And as we're seeing in one Earth where they're still in the West, we're introduced to this one girl, um, uh, Chakal and Chakali, and she's basically into uh, talking with this universal version of Tony, you know, and as they're coming through, they come up to a bar where, I love this, of course, these women are, you know, protesting it and everything, saying how it's, you know, a, you know, um, they bring, you know, bo uh, booze brings about, um, you know, horrible things and all that. And I'll be like, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm a woman. Not some abstract woman out in the ether somewhere. And, um, although, then the woman, the, the other one, then says, yes, well, I can't say I'm surprised you make your living, um, uh, flying purebred white men with liquor to drag them down to your level. Smacks her and just walks on in casually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that woman deserved it. <laughs> and we're meeting up to her um, father. A former villain known as the Hurricane. The fastest outlaw that ever lived. And, well, turns out Tony's been trying, you know, um, Chikali's been talking to Tony about trying to use her father as to help get money and everything out so they could leave. As, um... We see, uh, you know, but then the father forces, you know, Tony out of there. And then we find out zombie attacks, you know, have already started. It's, um, oh, what type was it? The, um, oh, they don't give the type yet. But basically, um, yeah, she showed, uh, the zombies are, uh, one of them, Kid Colt, who died, his body was on display, broke out, and is already starting, and starts eating Cody. As we see, Jaquila is arguing with her father saying, I want to leave this place. And her father is just trying to say like, you know, like, hey, I'm a legend, but legends only live in the memory. And it's always the same to you, I'd rather keep it that way. Being fed up, she decides to go to her mother's grave. One last time before she leaves, they're all coming out of the ground. And then, well, zombies all start to attack and everything. Tony does, everything's just starting to go to hell. And I just love it how Miss, um, the woman from earlier runs on it and basically starts telling it up. You're like, you gotta help them. Stop them, please. And it ain't surgery. Ain't, ain't, ain't surgery you disapprove of. You just want to be able to dispose of it right quick once it outlives your usefulness. So go to all you want and after you've saved us. <laughs> and he even says like, you always have a shotgun beneath the bar, don't you? Something like that. And he then pulls out some guns and just uh, railing him to everyone. Some old friends and everything. And yeah, he just starts going to town. You see why he's the hurricane. He takes them all out. But then he sees his wife, Jaquila's mother, who had earlier he claimed died of a fever. No, it wasn't a fever that did it. Turns out the um, inn was low on funds. So the wife decided, you got to try using her powers to do it. Thing is, he's not a quick shot. He doesn't have the aim or anything. One less is in the middle of a fight. She died. and But he passes the power on to his daughter. And she takes them all out. Even her parents. Until one of them is the Iron Mask. Yeah, he's, she starts just, you know, going into them. 
and uh, into him, but Iron Mask doesn't do anything. He's about to get her, and then he's saved by Machine Man and Howard the Duck. <laughs> hey, where does it look like we came from, Cut Tut Cleveland? <laughs> As, um, um, I love this. You're, you're a duck wearing pants? My lawyer tells me I've always been wearing these pants. <laughs> I love jokes like that. As we're then told, this type is a ghoul. If I remember right, this type is the... It's... Actually, I forget what type it is. I think it's supposed to be the traditional Romero zombies, I think. Where they're, you know, they all... No. Yeah, these are the Romero zombies. Cause, yeah, it is, because they're all coming out of the graves and everything. And then she says, like, let me come with you. I got nothing here. Hey, right. what do you say, Aaron? You've seen how handy she is with a gun. Yeah, what do I care? All you fuzzy ones look alike to me. <laughs> Howard's look. Okay, maybe not you. And then they head into a universe of the Martians, the Kill Grave. We talked about him before in um, uh, Wolverine Black Cat, so here we are again. As we find out earlier, Machine Man is wasted. Why? Back in my Avengers, Jocasta went was Ultron again. And he is devastated. Turns out, though, um, um, Morbius is going along with, you know, sending them out there to try and find some other violent cures. We're trying to find a definite cure to help um, uh, Werewolf by Midnight. Because, obviously, he's still infected. Well, you remember from the Wolverine Blackhead, this is where the Mar and the um, Martians are still attacking. And basically everything, you know, they're just kicking butt. Shaquille is helping them out. You know, Swift Cloud is helping them out. You know, they're basically joining in on all the fun, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We find out that they have a death breeders facility where they have a bunch of these, you know, make these women pretty so they could feast on their children and everything. Oh, Lord, that is disgusting. And, um, basically, you know, they, uh, Kill Raven gets an idea with... Um, Aaron, but he's saying if you truly wish to die because he has a death wish, why not do this? So they send Kill Rape and they sell Aaron in. He's infected with some of the virus they had gathered, and basically it, it alters all of the women as they are now shambling after them all. Um, what, the what was the type? Oh, the boil, which I believe is the one from. Um, 21, uh, 20 days after or whatever. Whatever that one, other zombie one is. But then, even though they take down all the different women, yeah, then the babies are still fine. Yeah, that's creepy. That is creepy as all hell. But eventually the zombies start to win out and Kill Raven feel like it was necessary. Aaron then puts himself in one of the uh, Martian machines and, well, they won. Yeah, it was a simple story, yes. The next one is them um, in the... Oh, well, one that's still in the medieval time. And it's just, well, you probably know them breathing through it a bit more. Not as much characterization as the first issue, I'm afraid. As a lot of this magic is brought about them by them wishing on, you know, a magic spell and everything. And, um... Uh, oh, I think these are supposed to be equivalents of deadites or something. Oh, some type of demons. They all start to attack at everything. As, um, yeah, it turns them all more into monsters possessed. We see that, you know, there's Machine Man still in his Martian ship. Everyone freaks out, start hurling zombie heads at them until they eventually crash. Yeah. But eventually they're told, like, hey, we know how to help you out with all this. So they're given a chance of doing it. And, um,. Like, we have use of these. And then, uh, basically, they're like, hey, you're going to help us out here with it. Because these are the Raimis. So, in other words, these are the Deadites, basically. And, um, basically, she's like saying, hey, you help us out, and we'll leave you be, all right? So, yeah, they're basically giving them not much of a choice. And they'll be like, hey, we'll get it all done by the end of the day. Or, and give us the metal we need to fix it, and we'll leave. So basically they do and <laughs> she looks great. I love Swift Cloud. I wish they'd do more with her. And basically she goes in. This is where we get a set of art change. You go from here to here. And I'm I don't hate it, 
but I'm not fully a fan either, I'm afraid. As it's really way too scratchy compared to the cleaner art. As they, you know, she starts, Swift Class starts fight, uh, fighting them off. Although I do love at one point how she shoots an arrow, runs him over, grabs and just keeps reusing it. That's clever. She eventually gets her way in, and because she was the only one that can, and takes them all out. Gives them visions of her parents from them, but, yep, doesn't take as she takes it out. Now, earlier you had some of these guys had dealt with, and the people of this kingdom had taken care of um, some um, worshippers of, Thor, of Odin. Thor shows up at the very end. Ah, oh, crap. And, oh, bollocks. The next one is um, in a very uh, cyberpunk future. There's Iron Man 2020 is in this particular one. And basically everything's been hacked, turned up. We got a future version of um, Amadeus Cho flying around. As they're all trying, he's trying to hack into this um, series. We have, turned out that there's one where Jocasta's in charge. So, Howard's been trying to avoid it, I'm seeing it. We get Swift Cloud in a very Matrix-like outfit. Um, they're looking around trying to prevent um, Aaron from finding out Jocasta. Yeah, it doesn't go so well and he takes off. But then we find out that they hack up this huge um, narrative of a, um, basically of a TV show that they want to know how it's going to end, so everyone's hacked into it. But it turns out it has a zombie infection. As they all, as you see, Jocasta, and not Jocasta, Ch Amadeus and his girlfriend just eat each other, literally. Yes. Uh, what type is it in this one? Um, Alright. Where does it say what type they're looking for? Um, oh, come on. Um, does it even say what they call it? Well, I gotta find where it says it. It's a... Oh, come on. What type is it? <sighs> Should have done look, look ahead of time for all this. I don't know if they actually gave a specific name for this type, but um, no, it doesn't look like they did. But basically, you have these cybernetic zombies and everything going in for the attack. Meets up with, you know, Aaron meets up with Jocasta and she is all over him. Until you're seeing that, um, um, yeah, all these cybernetic zombies attacking. Really, she's the bad guy. Swift Clan decides to implant herself so she can find out about the show, the latest episode of it. And unfortunately, it even turns her as well. And Jakarta explains their whole plan. And then they are they're able to um, well, keep on fighting her up. And Iron Man 2020 shows up and fights with Machine Man. Ironic. Because that was when he first appeared within a Machine Man story. They keep on fighting it out until, turns out, his own armor turns out. And, and uh, Jesus. His own armor ate him from the inside. They clunked out um, Swift Cloud and it was revealed that if you take out Jocasta, she'd be fine. So Jocasta's trying to be all like, can't we still be friends? Nah. So Aaron's finally gotten over it. Then we get into the last issue. This last issue is a bit of a t uh, torn on it. I just got away. This one is the zombies and this one are based off of um, Dead Alive or Brain Dead by Peter Jackson. Um, basically this one guy is able to, you know, he is a Marvel zombie, a big comic nerd, and he gets his hand on a, obviously fictional, number one, issue 151 of Machine Man and Howard the Duck. Apparently he fought because a guy slipped in a naughty word, but, um, got his hand on it, somehow though, he became a zombie. Yeah. And, um, basically we then have everything shut down for Morbius, Howard and, um, with Cloud and, um, and Aaron all show up, and they're like, this is Earth 000, our Earth in other words. And everyone is normal. The poor ignorant bastards. <laughs> Basically, the rest of this story is all about this guy trying to figure out what to do. You know, like, what's going on. He's trying to feed himself and everything, but it's not enough. He pukes it up. Uh, his bird is, you know, tweeting. He almost eats it. But he tells him to go, you know, go and everything. Just, you know, to leave. 
Um, a little girl trail shows up for cookies. You think he's gonna eat her? Nope, he just bought all the cookies he could. He's still eating them. Um, he, uh, he's ready to light himself on fire until he hears a scream. And he's like, no, wait, I could be a hero. The zombie Marvel. Turns out there was no woman screaming. Just there was another, well, she was screaming, but for a different reason altogether. And, um, Howard kicks his way in. Turns out the guy froze. Rigor mortis. <laughs> oh, man. They get the sample they need. And they light the guy on fire as they then leave. And Howard starts asking all of these questions about, who knows? Why, if the zombies are rapidly hungry, do they leave enough of their victims uneaten to become more zombies? If humans are zombie food, why don't zombies die once and most, of, most or all of the planet as people have been eaten? And most of all, you send away bodies decomposed after death when all the zombies just one day rot away or be con uh, con incapacitated like this poor bastard. That's what I love about you, Harris H. You never let facts get in the way of a good story. And that's the end. We have a lackluster ending, but still fun. And overall, this whole story was a nice tour de force. Not Fred Belante's last story. I'll probably do that next time uh, tomorrow. But it is still fun. So, this is the last of the hardcovers. The other ones are all going to be the individual issues. But I'm still going to get through them all. And that was the end. I thought it was very good. Like I said, a good send off of everything the final loose threads of um of the marvel zombies three four and five tri little trilogy wrapped up again it has really nothing to do with four or three and four but except the morbius stuff but it's still fun and swift cloud's an endearing character howard is great as always and he'll stick around going forward and um aaron gets some resolution on the jacasta stuff that's all i gotta say See you guys tomorrow.